A couple host changes for this one. We announced Keeley. Keeley uh, can't be here tonight. No Max Brown. It's just the two of us. Oh, man. Jordan this Moore, Sean here. Cody. Uh, just uh, just a little co-host situation and the head coach, Lincoln Riley, uh, coming on in. The head coach interview presented by iTrust Capital. Retire with Crypto. Coach, uh, our first uh, one coming off a loss, unfortunately. And, boy, it was a, it was a heck of a college football game. Uh, you come up uh, just one point short. You've had... What a, about 48 hours since then. Is there anything that you digested during that time, looking at it on film, that, that, that you look back on and say, man, this is the thing, or these were the things that just, that just leave you a couple plays short? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it was a great fight. I, I don't know that there was a lot that we didn't realize you know, right after the game that all of a sudden has, has come to, our, you know, to, to the surface. I mean, we... We played really well in a lot of spurts. Um, those those road games like that are really, really tough to win against good teams like on their own. Um, we had some adversity. We had to find ways to handle it. To handle it, um, yeah. And it came down to, to you know to kind of a couple of sequences where we weren't at our best. And um, so we, you know, we put ourselves in position to to win it and uh, needed to make one more play to win it. And unfortunately, weren't able to make it. So it's uh, yeah, it's disappointing because you. Like a team like that, a good football team, all the emotion in that stadium, the atmosphere there was, I mean, all the all the things kind of leading up to it, like you know you're gonna get their best. Like you and and to put yourself in position to win it is very, very difficult. Um, that's why I mean historically in college football, you know, home teams win seventy percent of the games. I mean, forever and ever. And it's 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 hard to do. And so it's disappointing to Certainly disappointed to put ourselves in position to win it and to not get it done, um, and and that's the bottom line. And so we've, uh, you know, there, there's you can go back and point to. I mean, when you lose it the, in the way we did, you can go back and point to a hundred different things, yep. right? Everybody's going to look and see the things at the end. Everybody's going to see um, some of the opportunities that we didn't make on all three sides. Uh, you're going to go back and look at some of the key penalty calls, like all those things. But I mean. The reality is we played well enough that we needed one of those things to go our way and, and we win the game. And uh, so, but uh, a ton to build on. I mean, this this team, uh, you know, we, we can, we're going to have a shot to win every game left on our schedule. There's no question about it with what, but we're going to have to work right? and we're going to have to get better um, because we've got some big challenges coming up. Coach, watching the film, I was really impressed with the preparation I thought that went into the game. You know, you go back and you look at Oregon State and offense looked a little discombobulated going to that one. This one, guys are on the ball, ready to go. No, no, you know, false starts for the most part and on the offensive line, especially that with, the, with that stadium rocking. What was that preparation like and how proud were you the guys came out there and they really executed on the offensive side of the ball? Yeah, we, we were better, certainly. I mean, I think we, we you know, had some holes certainly in our game after the after the Oregon State game and and uh, we felt like we've made some consistent improvements since then and that was a good defense and it was a you know one of those atmospheres that you've got to you got to really be on top of it and uh, so uh, other than the two minute execution I mean you know played a played a pretty pretty clean game there and uh, made some explosive plays and it was excited we, we were able to do it with a lot of different weapons um, and, and got contributions from a lot of different people which was key yeah I wanted to stay with that then uh you know the story. There could have been so many stories coming out of that game, and certainly when when Michael Jackson the third scores, you know that, that that was an incredible story, and it just made me think. You guys talk so much about the next man up mentality. What does that mean for your wide receiver room and and your team at large? That it really is like the actual proof that anyone can get thrown in at any time in the biggest moment of the season. Instead of just sort of saying that philosophically, you really have something to point to. Yeah, I mean, I think the whole team sees. You know what kind of a play that was and and for him to be able to make it and give our team a great chance to win the game um for us to have the trust to to go to him in that moment I mean yeah you're right they they see all of that and so maybe for guys that their time hasn't quite come yet it's a it's a reminder that it could be me and it could be in a moment certainly when my team needs me the most coach defensively I thought the team came out on lights on fire too it it looked like everything was working early and then you kind of catch a patch there and the tight end starts working the field a little bit what did you see defensively that, that the team needs to work on Number one thing is we didn't tackle well, and that's been a, you know, the unfortunate thing. I mean, that's been a strength of our defense. Mm-hmm. You know, in the first six games, I mean, there has not been a lot of yards after contact, um, uh, and we've gotten people on the ground. And I think, you know, listen, the, the quarterback had a really good night throwing the football. Uh, the tight end made some outstanding catches. When you play other good teams with good players, they're going to make some sure. plays too, right? The thing you can't do is you can't give them the 
five yard completion that turns into 18 yards, right? You can't you can't make some of the mistakes that we made, and then you compound that with the you know the two roughing the passer calls um, that that were drive enders, and then and kept drives going, and were ultimately 14 points. I mean. It just it, it it makes for a tough night defensively, yeah. and that's and that's what it was. So the most disappointing thing was the tackling because we were in position to shut down a lot of those plays. For those plays to be you know minimal yardage, you, then you, you know, instead of getting to third and one, all of a sudden it's third and six, and uh, you know, or it's instead of third and four, all of a sudden it's third and nine. I mean, you've got to you got to capitalize and you got to make people earn it. And uh, I think that was the thing we were most disappointed is we felt like we, we gave too many yards and didn't make them earn it as much as, as you would like to. What did you see from the pass rush? Because it's been such a strength uh, this season. It felt like you were close at times there, but didn't rack up the sacks or, or, or get the sort of negative yardage plays. Really, any, any TFLs were sacks in the game. What, what did you see that was a beat off there? Yeah, weren't good enough. I mean, just weren't good enough. We didn't get in the backfield enough. And, and uh, some of the nature of that is, you know, all of the play action throw game, you know, and max protect. You're not always going to get somebody yeah. there every single time, but you've got to affect the pass for more. And we affected them a little bit at times. I mean, I, you know, as again, I go back to the, the sequence really being big of, you know, we hit them, you know, a couple of times and get stops and, and, and the, you know, you get the rough and the passer calls and those are, it just it changes the whole feel of the game. All of a sudden, you're hitting it and causing them to go to the sideline, or causing them to throw an interception. It's just wiped off the board. And the, the and so, um, and and listen, they did a good job in protection against us. We didn't get in the backfield enough uh, for for us, regardless of what scheme we play against. Uh, getting TFLs and, and sacks are a big part of who we are when we're playing at an elite level. Coach, I've been on teams where you lose, and the guys the next week are just in the. I mean, the coaching staff and everybody, and it just seems to carry on for more than that week, and it just drags. And then I've been on teams where, hey, we lost guys, and the emotions, we turn that emotions off, we can step forward to the next, to the next game. It sounds like, from what I'm hearing from you, is you're that kind of coach that says, hey, let's get this thing turned around, let's figure out what we got to do and get it pointed right in, in, the, in the right direction. Oh, absolutely. I mean, how, how can you not be excited about, you know, what we've done up to this point? And, and in a lot of ways, the position we put ourselves in Saturday night against, again, the defending conference champion and probably their biggest home game of the yep. year. And uh, so, yeah, I no, it's one play at the end of the game is not going to change how you feel about your football team. You know, like it's it's. This team battles, and this team is extremely competitive. And a, we, we got a really good football team, and we got a real opportunity to do something very, very cool here. And, and part of mine comes from experience. You know, I, I've been here. Um, I know what this looks like. I mean, I've, I've had, you know, been a part of teams, you know, four different times where we suffered a loss at some point in the year, and we ended up with the ring on our finger and in the college football playoff. So I, I, I know what it looks like, and and I. You know, I, I think this team is capable of a, of a tremendous run here to finish. You're listening to the head coach, Lincoln Riley, on Trojans Live. Uh, you know, we talked before the game, Caleb Williams had to be at his best to give you guys a chance. Uh, certainly, statistically, he was. He made some incredible plays. How, how, do, how do you assess his performance as a whole? He played well. You know, it was, uh, it was, it was a, a, big, a big step for him. Um, played at a high level, um, got the ball out, you know, made some spectacular plays. You know, he ran with it well and was aggressive as a runner, and that was something we pushed him to be. Um, you know, as you can't get too far away from that gift that you have there, and that was certainly a big factor in the game. So, now I was proud of the way he played. I mean, it, it wasn't perfect, but he, it was at a high level and certainly gave our team a chance to win. Coach, one of the cool moments uh, in the game, unfortunately, Eric Gentry gets hurt. But he's able to kind of go out there and try to rally the troops. What does it mean to have a leader like that, who even battling injury, running out in the field, and you could see the emotion come off his face? What does it mean to have a guy like that who's, who's really going to go to war with you? That, that's just this team. You know, I mean, that's it doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. I didn't see it happen during the game, um, but it doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, I think that's he's one of 50 guys that would have would have done that. I mean, it's just – it's kind of how we're wired. I mean, the guys care about each other. They care about winning. Uh, they care about this place. And uh, that's why they've improved and, and why we've been able to do some of the things we have. And I think why there's so much optimism for the back half. Yeah, and another guy who I thought you know, maybe played his best game as a Trojan was, was Mario Williams. So what did you see from him? And obviously, it, once Addison goes down, you know, he takes more of a focal role. Uh, but, but what did you see from Mario? Yeah, made some real nice plays for us. I thought he, I thought he ran well after the catch. Uh, had some really nice routes, some really competitive plays. Um, you know, he played a little bit steadier. Um, you know, without the ball, I thought he blocked. Um, you know, a lot better. 
And really, the only negative he had was a couple penalties. Had the one real big one there at the end. But I mean, he was a, a big time playmaker for us. I mean, I mean, no question about it. Explosive plays all over the place, and um, you know, really agonizingly close to having a couple more. So, um, but he did a really nice job. It was good to st- see him step up, and um, you know, he's really last few weeks has really progressed and and is um, you know, I think playing with a lot of confidence right now. Coach had a little trouble uh, guarding the tight end last week when you're going into the game like that it didn't look like you know they had Brant Keithy who was you know their number one tight end he goes down how prepared were you for how explosive Dalton Kincaid could be and then what was the uh, kind of the adjustment you wanted to make after he saw he started to get going yeah I think I think their offense is is certainly centered around that and the personnel groups they play in and so obviously they 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 lost a good player early in the season but it's not like it was he was one of one in the room right? right we knew there was other good players and uh yeah, I mean, tight, tight ends are, you know, especially really good tight ends are classically a tough matchup, yeah. right? You know, we, we mix, mix coverages. Um, he did a nice job a couple of times beating us in man coverage. Um, and then in the zones, I think, like we said, the biggest issue we had in the zones was was not necessarily coverage. It was just more tackling. You know, we, we way too many, you know, underneath comp- completions that should be four or five yards max, and then they're turning into explosive passes. And, I mean, that just – I mean, think about all the things that does. That takes pressure off an offensive line. You know, it takes pressure off the QB. He's not having to make a throw that's that's super tough. But but you're not. A lot of times, the trade off that is is you're only maybe getting four or five, six yards a pop, and you have to really earn it. Versus, you can do all that and then and then turn them into explosive plays, mm-hmm. right? I mean, that's that's just uh, it puts the offense in a great position and puts the defense with their back against the wall. And uh, I thought too often we tried to just hit them. Instead of you know being fundamentally sound and making sure that we wrapped up and um, and it burned us. All right, you've got to train hard to play hard. Monster Hydro contains essential electrolytes and energy you need to perform at your best. Learn more at MonsterEnergy.com. Monster Hydro hard charging hydration. And Trojans Live is sponsored by Pachanga Resort Casino, proud partner of USC football. The Trojans are on a bye this week. They'll play uh, in Tucson a week from Saturday. We just got that kickoff time. That'll be a four o'clock. Uh, kickoff, but we'll talk to Coach uh, about the the bye week preparation next. You're listening to Trojans Live. combination at Pachanga Resort Casino. And with your resort favorites back in action, there's all of the excitement and comfort you love with the peace of mind you can depend on. So whenever you're ready for a little rest, a little relaxation, and a lot of fun, we'll be here. Play your perfect combination at Pachanga Resort Casino today. With a Ralph's Rewards card, it's easy to get lower than low prices for the win. And for every dollar you spend, you earn fuel points, which can add up to $1 per gallon off at the pump for the win. Plus, save every day on groceries and get personalized digital coupons for the win. The Ralph's Rewards card. All you do is win. Big, big savings. Sign up now at ralphs.com and start saving. Ralph's. Fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Fuel restrictions apply. Rates are on the rise, but with Rocket, you get an advantage. You can lock your rate for 90 days while you search for a home. If rates drop within three years of buying your home, you'll get exclusive savings from Rocket Mortgage to refinance to a new lower rate. We'll help you lock it and drop it so you can buy today. That's the Rocket Advantage. Call 8337-ROCKET or go to therocketadvantage.com. Must lock purchase rate between 719-22 and 930-22. Call 1-833-7-ROCKET for coverage fees, terms, and conditions. Equal housing lender license in all 50 states and unless consumer access.org number 3030. Fight on to victory with USC and fly on faster with ONT. Ontario International Airport puts the relaxation back into flying with the fastest and easiest airport experience in SoCal. Not to mention ONT has over 65 nonstop flights to more than 25 major destinations with less traffic coming in and out. In other words, getting here is a breeze and so is following our Trojans anywhere the season takes them. Because let's be honest, faster is always better when it comes to your airport. Start planning your next journey today at SoCalSoEasy.com. Covering all things SC. Touchdown, USC! 
say. It's Trojans Live with Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, and Max Brown. week coach um, I'm guessing a, a good time for your team considering how physical that game was for, for a bye week but you know also there's that side of hey we lost a game we want to get back out there is the timing good for a bye week what do you think yeah I've been asked that question a lot over the years <laughs> I mean it's kind of like you, you take them as you go right like I mean it's you got to use the advantages that you have with it uh, certainly you know, we've got a few guys that'll that'll be good. Uh, it'll be good to heal up. It's been a you know a physical tough uh, you know really stretch, and so we got to take advantage of that. And there's several areas of that that we need to need to make some strides. And so this is a uh, tell people all the time. It's it's definitely we just don't have a game this weekend, but it's definitely not an off week. Right? We're, we're you know our guys are working. We're going to be working, um, prepping for the second half of the season, and and doing a lot of work just internally on our squad um, because certainly some things that we want to correct and be better at in the second half. Yeah, one of those things usually is uh, not just getting guys healthy, but getting a chance to look at maybe some of the younger guys who are kind of getting, not pushed to the back, but you don't get to watch them all the time, getting them some reps. What's it, who are some of the guys you want to work with this week that, hey, maybe these guys are close, maybe this week help them get over the hump and get going in the second half? Yeah, you know, two two kind of sections of the team, right? You've got You've got the group of guys that maybe are – you know, twos or threes in a lot of areas that, that are playing for us and doing some really good things, but maybe not playing a lot of game reps. Mm -hmm. And so um, several of those guys will be featured this week. And then and then you've got the guys that are maybe running scout team or potentially red shirting some of those guys behind the scenes that, that we want to elevate up and get a lot of work and get to coach them directly. And so, um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's certainly a, a mix. And I do think kind of where the bye week comes determines a little bit the schedule mm -hmm. um, but catching it here in the middle where we do have a few guys that we want to rest and, and freshen up a little bit it you're right it does give you a chance to develop them and then I think you know we talked about you know Mike Jackson and you know follow and some of those guys that made you know really big plays for us um, you know that have kind of been in reserve roles like we're going to need more people on all three sides to do that in the second half of the season and and we'll probably need more to step up and do it then than we needed in the first half mm -hmm. um, just as you know, bodies get tired and you get banged up and there's going to be some attrition and that's just that's part of it. And so developing those guys, um, you know, getting those guys ready for prime time because we'll need them is a, is a key factor this week. Yeah, how about Josh Follow? I hadn't caught a touchdown in, in three years. You get him two on, on Saturday. Uh, you know, what, what does that do for, for his confidence and, and an opportunity to develop a, another weapon in this offense and a guy so far you using really effectively as a blocker as well? Yeah, really excited about him. He 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 really played at a high level. And honestly, I mean, the the two touchdowns were good plays. But I mean, even past that, I mean, he really played well for us. And and proud of kind of how far he's come. You know, he was way behind at one point and having a lot of injury issues. And you know, and he's he's one of the great examples on this team that's kind of hung in there and kind of carved out a role and all of a sudden played better and better and got some opportunities because of it. So um, he was. You know, certainly one of our best players the other night, and and uh, you know, six weeks ago, I don't know if anybody really would have foreseen that. But when you when you keep working and you keep your head down and you're ready when your opportunity shows up, you can do great things. And he was a big factor for us. Coach, is this one of these weeks where you say, yeah, it's about us, it's about us, but you sprinkle in a little bit of Arizona just so the guys know, hey, we're we're playing the Wildcats pretty soon. So maybe unconsciously, you kind of just sprinkle some stuff in, no? Uh, we may sprinkle a little bit here as the week goes on, but I mean, even for us, I, it, this is going to be a you know ninety ninety five percent work on us. Okay. I mean, that's there's just there's a lot of ball left, and there. I remember coaches telling me like, "Oh, it's just going to be about us," and you think, "Oh man, that kind of looks like their <laughs> offense, coach. We're we're, we're walking through uh, some funny plays here." Yeah, sometimes us coaches take creative license a little <laughs> bit on some of that, so uh, you never know. We might sprinkle a little bit in. You mentioned in the first segment how crucial those rough in the passer penalties were, and you can really tie them to to fourteen points that that might have come off the board. It's become a huge topic. The NFL, uh, it's been a huge topic the last couple of weeks. You're a former quarterback. Where do you stand on that rule and, and where it's sort of gone in this sport? I mean, I know you're sort of, again, you, you come from that offensive side, but as a head coach, you sort of see it from both sides, I imagine. Yeah, you know, I really think the the NFL rule, in my opinion, is much harder to officiate. Um, the NFL quarterbacks are protected more than the college quarterbacks. I mean, for sure. And 
it's the NFL's become where man, it's <laughs> it's it's getting you're getting pretty limited on ways that you can actually contact the quarterback at all. I actually think the college one's pretty easy to officiate, right? You don't go low, you don't hit them in the head, you don't hit them late, and you don't hit them with the crown of your helmet. Like you don't do those things, and it's not a penalty. It's not it's not real hard. Um, apparently, it was a little tougher than <laughs> than I uh, uh, than I described, but. Yep. Uh, yeah, I just I don't think there's any excuse to miss it in the college game. The NFL one, I would have a hard time refereeing, to be honest. I mean, it's uh, it's such a fine line. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think the college one makes sense too. I mean, I get you want to keep guys healthy, but I mean, it, it is football, you know, and 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 you know there is going to be some contact, and you've got to let defensive players, you got to let those guys cut loose too. And um, so, I, I like the rules we have in place in college. I think it's very clearly defined for officials and should be pretty tough to miss. Coach, you talk about getting the players some rest and stuff. How does Lincoln Riley get a little break from the action? Is it a nice book? How about perhaps a <laughs> beach walk? What does Lincoln Riley do to unwind? You got to unwind yeah. a little bit, Coach. You can't be film all day. Well, I've never lived somewhere close enough to be able to do a beach walk on a uh, bye week. So, <laughs> um, you know, we'll, we'll work pretty hard this week. We'll get a chance to recruit some this weekend, which will be good. Uh, Saturday, we're going to get our guys out of there, um, our staff, let them spend time with their families, and that's where I'll be. I'll probably be doing something with my two girls, probably something outside or something really girly. There's no telling. Um, <laughs> I'm there so, with you. Yeah, yeah it'll be uh, straight girl dad on Saturday. Well, we appreciate your time. Enjoy your bye week. Enjoy some family time if you can get it. And we'll come on back and we'll talk to you about Arizona next.